And the president's also been eager to show just how well they're going. The man has never been more coherent and clear on his vision for the nation. I, I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, he really should clear it. Um, but good news, after 378 days, the president has finally made it to East Palestine, Ohio. That's 378 days after a toxic train derailment and fire that sent poisonous fumes into the air. And gosh, it was worth the wait. Biden was as sharp as ever. On day, on, on, on data breaks that meet higher safety standards. I can already see this derailment won't define you. It just uh, it defines you in a different way. It won't mm. define you, but it does define you in a different way. That's good to know. Oh. And right before Biden left for Ohio, he scolded the White House for having a two-week recess. How dare they go on a break? Instead of going on a two-week vacation, Two weeks, they're walking away. Two weeks. What are they thinking? My God, this is bizarre. <laughs> the pure chutzpah of this guy is amazing. Railing against a two-week vacation from a president who has spent around 40% of his presidency on vacation. Yes, Biden hasn't just broken records for illegal immigration. He's also breaking records for number of vacation days on personal overnight trips away from the White House. When you hear him speak these days, though, you can see why he needs the rest and relaxation. You can also see why they are trying to put his biggest political rival in jail on trumped-up charges because no amount of mail-in voting and Zuckerbucks is going to save Joe in 2024. Now to the Albanese government, and it is uh, increasingly clear that this is an unserious government full of unserious people who are better suited to activism and culture wars than governing. In the past week, we have seen illegal boats arriving again. We've seen further details on how utterly inept multiple ministers have been in dealing with the release of hardened criminals from immigration detention. And we had the bad news that the unemployment rate has jumped to a two-year high of 4.1%. And in the midst of all that, we still have the Prime Minister pushing for treaty and so-called truth-telling. And we had this startling update from Indigenous Australians Minister Linda Burney. The issue of truth-telling is incredibly uh, important uh, and uh, there are many, many ways in which that can happen, including school curriculum. Yes, the Albanese government appears hell-bent on defying the will of the Australian people and pressing ahead with a divisive race-based agenda. Remember the Uluru Statement? The voice was to be step one, followed by so-called truth-telling and then... Makarata or treaty. And now they want elements of that in the school curriculum. It's frankly hard to think of a more daft idea than corrupting the curriculum further with political dogma and historical racial grievances. What we've seen this week is just further proof that this is a government not fit for office, a government of hard-left activists and pretenders who prefer culture wars to governing.